Okay, while we get this uh, up and running, uh, I'll just say a, a few words about myself. I, I think it's important to put myself into the context here, also for, for the topic that I'm going to talk about. So um, I, uh, I, I am a computer science uh, scientist. I have a computer science background. I, I started during the 90s, and I think during the 90s were kind of the the decade where, where uh, uh, compiler theory and type theory around uh, uh, functional languages really took off. So this is kind of where I come from. That is where my interest uh, was as, as a student. Later on, I, I've been a developer for a, a number of years, and now I, I have a, a manager position in, in, uh, in SimCorp. So, so that basically means that we are almost... Ah. Here we go. So, so that, that means that um, I, I, it's very easy for me to appreciate APL. It's very easy for me to, to see why APL is appreciated and used in SimCorp. And what I will try to do now is to make a, this topic a little bit different, probably a lot different from the topics I have uh, listened to today. Uh, and that is I, I, I will try to bring on the business value. Why are we in SimCorp using APL? In the end, when, when, when you as a company will decide, are we going to use F sharp or C sharp or APL or whatever we are going to use, what is actually driving these decisions? And I think with that angle, we can also probably get a little bit of, of uh, understanding, maybe open questions around what is APL in the future. Um, so that's kind of the, the angle here. So there will not be a lot of, of uh, APL details, technical details. So, so in that way, this presentation will be a bit different. So I have just a little bit about SimCorp because it's important for, the, con for, for the, the context that I will talk about. And also the people, because that's also important for us of why we're actually using APL. And then I don't think we can avoid having a little bit of, of insight into what is the product dimension. We have one kind of software product that is relevant here. How does that look like from a very high distance uh, uh, point of view? And then a little bit about what about APL going forward, seen from this business, uh, business perspective. So that, that's what I will try to do. I hope you will stay with, with the idea to be not that technical. So SimCorp, I think what is important to understand is that we are 250 developers working on APL. Our development department is bigger, so, so it's, it's more like 450 people that brings our software together on a daily basis. So, so th this is how it is. Th that is our daily day. What we also do is that we actually ship our product twice a year. So twice a year, 450 people decides, now we are done. Now it works. Let's ship it. So, so that's kind of the, moment, the, the, the rumble we have. And then we are around the world. We are, uh, we are in the investment management area. Um, uh, and, yeah. and our software is used to manage quite a bit of, of money around. So, um, and, and I, I think this uh, number of users is, is interesting. So we are, there are users out there that depend on APL on a daily basis. What is happening here? Um, and what is also important to understand is that our code base is, is fairly old. Uh, and for us, I mean, we are talking about software that lasts for a long time. If you trade a bond that, that have to survive 30 years, well, then you need code support for that in 30 years. Of course, you can change it as you go, but basically we are in the business where code survives for a long time. So I think that that's kind of uh, important to understand. Then when we talk about developers, who are they? What, 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 what is the background? And for us, of course, we do have people with a computer science background. We are a software company, so yes, we do have people with a computer science background. But we also have people with so many other different backgrounds, like math and physics, statistics, I've, I've mentioned here, because a lot of math goes into the financial world. That's just how it is. Finance, 
how do you trade a bond in Singapore or all the practicalities around actually doing this stuff is, is extremely important. So, so one of the, the reasons that I think it's, it's interesting to go to work at Simcorp every day is that we, we are developing a product where you can't just sit down and then you as one person solve the problem. I mean, you do depend on the, the, the other comp competences around. And that, again, goes back to the programming language. Do we have a programming language where these different competences can actually be brought together and work on the same piece of software? Um, and just to, it's kind of a, an, an just a, a side note here, but, but what we're also doing these days is that we are going agile and everyone have talked about, yes, a team, they can work like a scrum and you have this process on steroids where you work for two weeks and then you're done with a little bit piece of work and then you move on. We try to scale that to, to these uh, many hundreds of people. And that also puts some kind of, of, of pressure on, on, on the different programming languages we're using because it basically means that code are floating through the system extremely fast, at least compared to where we came from. Anyways, um, so APL is really uh, what, what kind of glues this together, seen from a competence point of view. We can, we can, we can all get into APL without a very, very long in introduction to this with these different backgrounds. If we look at the, the, the technology stack as it is today, <coughs> we have APL, and we have that for, for many years, and we are very happy about that. It has evolved into a number of lines of code. Uh, it's, it's not that small. We introduced C Sharp uh, and, uh, at, 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 uh, at, uh, like it's a little bit more than 10 years ago. We have loads of C Sharp, and I think these numbers just count about how how much code do you actually need to write in C-sharp in order to get something done? Um, we also have a bunch of very low component kind of stuff. So we also in the absolutely in the, in the native world with C++ and C and stuff like that. And then something like OCaml. How did OCaml get in so in our product stack? And that's basically because we, uh, we, we, uh, we use a, a contract language for, for financial contracts. But that's a completely different story. The, the whole point here is just to say that we are not only APL. We are also a company that have made other technology choices along the way. So it's actually technologies that have to work together that, that, that we are facing here. And the list is longer than this, but, but this is kind of the important part of this. And then um, third-party libraries, we have many of different subcontractors uh, producing libraries that we also use. And then this kind of figure here over here just kind of says that we are in the, I actually think we have more software, more lines of code than a Boeing 787 uh, airplane has. We're a little bit less than Firefox, and then one can think about that. <coughs> anyway, long-lived code is important to understand. We are not throwing code in, in the garbage can. We are maintaining it, but we are not throwing it in the garbage can. So. APL, yes, it is a language where we can get started even though uh, when we are not a computer scientist. That's kind of the experience we have. We, of course, do the training ourselves, uh, but, but that works pretty well. The reason for, the, for C Sharp was that at the time we, uh, we would like to, to have kind of a, uh, a more modern, and, and modern is kind of a weird word here, but we would like to have a user interface that was a little bit different in the sense that it should be uh, much more threaded. We should have so many different things going on at the same time. And here we are talking about front office users, the users that sit and, and make the decisions about what they are they going to buy and sell. Uh, so that was kind of the driver for, for that uh, decision. And it's ex absolutely uh, not a, a, a cheap decision uh, to do. And then I have to uh, talk about the OCaml thing. So now we are also, and this is why we have a, a phone, we're actually now also having a, a offering a, 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 um, a small app for the phone that integrates with our system. So now we are, we are also talking about going into this web stack. And from an enterprise point of view, then you get a little bit scared because how long time does software, the different JavaScript libraries and all the stuff you need for, for the website actually survive? So when we have this discussion, are we going to use this module? 
My question is, does this also live in two years' time? Of, of, of how does that actually work? So that's just the changes that is going on right now, uh, technology-wise. And then cloud. I mentioned it because cloud is also driven by business. If our customers want to execute their, their systems in the cloud, then we have to adjust to that. Rented hardware is just expensive. So then suddenly we go from a situation where we have all these millions of lines of code in the basement, running on some fixed hardware, going into a rented space where, where you actually would like the, the, the application to grow and, and shrink and only use exactly what you need. That's kind of a completely different, uh, uh, you can say, a, a way of, of, of I implementing and solving your, your, your system. So the point here is that there are different reasons, business reasons for cho choosing different kind of languages. And, and, uh, but, but let's just be fair and say for APL, it is very cost efficient. It, it's, it's bottom line. It, 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 it just is. Um, so um, part of the reason I think why we can bring in a, a guy with a, with a math background and he fairly quickly can get working is of course also that we have invested in frameworks around this. Um, but, but that is, is absolutely uh, uh, important. Um, yeah, and that means that if you can kind of focus on the business, because the business is absolutely com complicated enough, then, then you are in a better situation. And we are just a company that have, from the APL <coughs> point of view, a, a really great framework, and, and we are kind of uh, utilizing that. And we will be utilizing that for many years going forward. Then we have the, the entire support story. It's, it's pretty good for APL, and one could say that uh, now APL has 50 years of, of experience, so I am pretty sure that we also will get to the 60 years and the 70 years and the 80 years, right? So, so that's, 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 uh, that's, that's really good. When we actually make decisions on when to, how do we implement this piece of, of, of thing, and you have this technology stack. One part is that maybe sometimes we need a C-sharp based UI because there are some decisions for it. But if we can avoid it, and it's just, let's say, it's a configuration screen that is used like, <coughs> I don't know, once a month or something, then just do it the most cost-efficient way. That's kind of how we think. So, regarding, so, so having a technology stack than, than ours, then, of course, you can be in a, a business where you say, do we need to hide this fact? Do we need to hide that, for instance, an APL window in our system looks a little bit different from a window done in C-sharp? Do we have to hide that? I mean, we could do that. We could choose to try to hide that fact. But then, in our case, it is not extremely important. Because in the first place, what is really, really the value for our customers in for Dimension <coughs> is that they don't have to look at 99 Commer six or something percent of all the transactions. It's the automation that is, is really, really the value of our product. And it is okay that we have different modules around where the UI is shown a little bit differently. So that's, of course, uh, something we utilize because it makes us in a situation where we can actually have a system that looks a little bit different comparing to where you are. So, moving into kind of uh, the, the trends and, and what I would really like, I, I, I think I've succeeded here if, if you walk away and have kind of, hmm, that's something I have to think about. You may not agree with me, that is not important, but what is important, if I can put a few questions, open questions in your minds about the future of APL, then I think I, I'm really happy. So, from an enterprise point of view, when we do new development, I mean, we do not start a new app we extend a lot of code and then do a little bit of new. So <coughs> we are growing the system. So that means that abstraction is really, really important. Generation Y and C. Uh, I had an interview with a, with a really great young guy uh, uh, not, not so long time ago. And we talked about programming languages and that was, was really interesting. And then he said, well, C-sharp 
that's legacy, isn't it? <laughs> and then I was kind of, hmm, okay, what does that actually mean? Because where I come from, I think I, 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 I like interesting uh, program languages and I like to understand the different properties and how can you apply these different properties that these program languages have in the problem solving that you're going to do. But I think we have this challenge, right? Because we, ha we have young people today, they are, they are what I call kind of CV driven to a larger extent. They are looking at these new technologies and they don't want to work like 20 years with the same programming language necessarily. So I'm not saying that we should kind of give up on that. I just think we need to be conscious about how do we articulate the properties of programming languages and why it makes it a whole lot of good sense to actually work in APL or F sharp or whatever you want to work on because it is the domain you're solving. It's hopefully the joy of going to work is hopefully that you like to solve the job you do and then the programming language is a tool. You need to understand the tool. You need to, to use the, utilize the properties the, the right way. But that is a, an increasing uh, 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 challenge, I think, for the young uh, generation. Uh, then we have this parallelism. I will not say a lot about that because I know there have been sessions uh, ab about this. We all know this. Uh, and of course, that also uh, counts for, uh, for our product. We do have a, a, a challenge in, in our product in the sense that we over many years has built the product around a kind of a state. So, so we do have to begin with properties that are not that easy to, to, to work with when you want to parallelize. But we are absolutely have to go down that route. Declarative languages are, are gaining momentum. Java got Scala, C sharp got F sharp. I'm not saying that uh, APL should have APL sharp or something. That's not what I'm saying here. But I think this is one of the open questions that I, I would like to, to put on the table and say that sometimes you need to do some more fundamental changes in a program language in order to give it another 50 years. Is this now? I don't know. But I think we, we, we have to, to, to think about this. Are there properties around in newer programming languages that would actually make a whole good sense to put in APL, even though they may be a little bit hard to, to do? So this is kind of the, uh, one of the, the open questions that I would like to, to park. Um, cloud. Um, well, you can argue whether cloud is an operating system or not, but, but what cloud is, is that you, you develop software on, on new premises. You, you kind of have a stack of modules that can do all sorts of different things. And how do we kind of utilize either the product we are working on and then also the programming languages, including APL, how does that blend into to, 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 to the cloud? It may not be problematic, it may be we are, we are looking into this uh, uh, as we speak, and we will see wha what uh, challenges and decisions we will make going forward. But I, I, th I think it's relevant to think about. Static side type safety, it has been on the agenda uh, a couple of times here. Uh, Dialog 14, there is a presentation by Anna Sjark Nielsen uh, about what we have done in, in Simcorp in this area. Why do we think it's important? I mean, we think it's important because we have millions of lines of code. And we have all these people that go around and, and do changes on a daily basis. So having some kind of a safety net, it doesn't have to be perfect, but having some kind of safety net around this makes a whole good sense uh, to us. Um, so this is something we'll do more of uh, going forward. No, no, no doubt about that. Then uh, 64 bits, I think we also had today. Uh, we want high precision numbers. I actually would like to, to thank uh, Dialog. I, I think you have done kind of, you, you, have, you have pushed this, right? So, so that's really great. Um, seen from, from, from our point of view, yes, we need high precision numbers. And I'm really happy that we are in the process to try to find out what will, will work best. The reason that that is just a mega, mega project for us is of course that we have all this code. It, we have customers that of course, we need, our calculations need to be correct. But correctness, what is that? When we, if we kind of go into another library here and the numbers change, then we are dead. Our balances was this yesterday and now they're this today. Jesus, we are just on support from now and then the next 10 years, right? So there are so many other uh, kind of challenges uh, around this topic. Um, 
But if you go on, for instance, the Norwegian bank, uh, uh, then you will see that there are portfolios around that are getting so big that, that we, we are on the limits of, of what we, we get with the, with, uh, the current implementation. <coughs> Lifespan, I have talked a little bit about that. Web technologies comes and go. That's a little bit scary. Um, so let's try to, to isolate this as, as good as we can. Um, so that was a little bit about the trends that I kind of uh, chose to, to, to talk about. Um, going forward, um, I, I, I think we are in a good position. Dialog has done a, a lot of, of, of great things to, to keep, it, keep it modern, let's use that word, in different ways. Um, so that must never stop. Um, so, yeah. We are not using objects and all that uh, to the extent that we could do. Um, uh, but just to say that to us, I think safety, the type systems, whatever we can find out, actually having to annotate a little bit more, that is just something that we like because we have so much code. And we will try to go down that path. Uh, <coughs> so if somebody will join us in that, then that would be great. Then I, I, I mentioned that I come from a, a functional world. And, and then I combine agrobiotic data types, higher order functions with type safetyness. That would be one of the mind blowing things maybe to say, is this relevant? Is it doable? I don't know. But these are kind of could be one of the, the, the more long term decisions on, on what does it actually require APL in the future. And here I'm also thinking about the young generation. Uh, high precision numbers, uh, I think we have a uh, chance to really, really nail this and, and APL will be a first class here, so, so that would really be cool. Compilation uh, is ob obviously uh, great uh, and uh, uh, parallelization also. So futures and I isolates, put them in there, uh, GPUs we had a number of, of different uh, presentations over time about that. Optimize, optimize, optimize. I know it's something Dialog does every time and you have these great blue and red uh, tail graphs and it's so great to see that we have most blue and, and not a lot of, of red. But I mean, it, it, this never stops. From a business point of view, data grows, demands grows, it's a never ending story. So we need to de do more and more and more and more. So, um, so th this is fairly easy. To, to argue for. Memory, efficiency, the external workspace is not just mentioning some, some stuff that we are looking into now. It's, it's, it's something that, that, that we would like to, 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 to utilize absolutely. Um, the smaller things I think is important. Uh, I've just mentioned a, a few constants. I know that has been discussed uh, many times. I have mentioned uh, timestamps uh, because we use floats for, for timestamps in, in dimension and maybe we should change that, especially if we go to a higher precision number. This is just us. But I mean, there's a long list of stuff. So also these smaller details, they, they do matter. Um, APL instances with some shared caches in between in order to get uh, more stuff done at the same time in a more uh, kind of ha having a, a, a an extended tool in, in, in doing that could be something. Um, it's, it's, it's cool to see that that uh, uh, that uh, we are opening up for this so we can actually now kind of uh, 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 try to, to make other development environments. Why do I say that? Why is that important? Because I mean whether you do it in this tool or in another tool, how can that be important? And here again, I reflect back to the young people. I reflect back to being in a company where you have a technology stack that consists of different technologies. The development environment, working agile, scrum with all these very short development periods, these things begin to matter. In our case, we are not, uh, then Visual Studio is kind of where we live uh, when we do not do APL. So that would be our choice. But it does matter, especially when you have uh, hundreds of, of people that, 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 that have kind of the tool that they use every day. Uh, cloud, elasticity and service orientation. I don't know. 
I don't know if there's anything for uh, to, to, to think about or change for APL. We just started this journey and, and we will see what we come up with. Um, so I think my my end <laughs> remark here is that <laughs> Dialog APL is a great tool of, of thought. It's not my invention, it's, some, it's, it's something I heard from, from, uh, from uh, one of my colleagues, but I think it's spot on. It's really what APL is. And then, of course, we have all this stuff in, in front of us. So what? So the tough decisions. What is really, really important <coughs> to look at from a language point of view going forward? Is cloud going to make changes? I mentioned this functional thing that kind of picks up on the young people. Is it more parallelization? What is it? And I think these open questions, I, I hope that kind of they remain there for at least an hour. And then we will see, uh, and I would really like to enjoy uh, to engage into these discussions about the future from a language point of view, not from a tool point of view, because I, I think that's more straightforward, but the, where it really hurts is language. Do we need to, to make changes there for the next 50 years? Because we want this to be the next 50 years. Hmm? So, questions? Niels, thank you for that great view of dialogue from the point of view of a very mm. heavy user of the technology. You Without actually showing any APL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned um, in passing earlier that you're not currently using objects in, in dialogue. Oh, of the existing um, extensions to dialogue, and of the ones that you know are, are coming very shortly, mm. what, what, would, what would be your pick of the one that you're most excited about getting to work with uh, that, that you're not yet using? Um, or what would you hope to be getting from that? I think regarding the objects, it's actually, I mean, we have kind of an, an object model. It was something we did before. It was in, in introduced to APL, so that's also kind of a, a big part of, of, of the reason. I think what I mentioned here about the projects that we are ongoing, uh, about the high precision numbers, the eternal workspace, all, all that, that is kind of short term, very, very important for us. Uh, if, if that was kind of what you were hitting at. High precision numbers. Uh, that, is, uh, that is on the agenda. It's important for us, but how? It, it will be a long project for us because are you going? I mean, if we're, if we're talking about the entire system, then there's so much code, it's, so mu it's across the technology stack and what are actually the performance and all that around that. We, have, we can't just go out and, sorry guys, now, well, we have high precision numbers, but now we are 20% slower. I, I mean, that would not work. So it is kind of a, a, a long-lasting project and we, are, we, ha we have to eat it in steps mm. um, and then deal with the, or the differences in the results that our customers do not like while we do it. Hmm? Hi, you mentioned, uh, what, a million lines of APL code? I think there are or, two. Or is it 10 million? No, 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 no. Two, two and, and a half. half. That, ra that rather boggles the mind. And how much of that is replicated code or due to a lack of good common tools that everybody uses? I, I mean, I, 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 I think that... Um, of all the APL code that I have uh, had the, the, the joy to see today, I mean, we of course have lots of APL code that is also very sequential code. So, I mean, the code we do by all these different people that have these dif different backgrounds may not qualify as APL code in one-liners that you say. I mean, we have, we are verbose uh, around the APL, how we implement APL. Um, it just seems... So, and, and then, I mean, the question around, I mean, if you're h hinting that, uh, I mean, c could this be modelized into smaller, having more reuse and, and, and stuff like that? Um, I think the, 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 the discussion around how you, you modelize a system that has been developed over 20 years. Of course, we have many parts in our system that is kind of a spaghetti. Yes, we do have. But I think what is the really true value of why we are still in the business is that uh, the financial concepts 
that goes into actually trading a, an instrument like uh, settlement defaults and day car conventions and all these needed de details, we have a really, really good understanding of the framework around that. And that is, is kind of really important for us. And then you can, uh, of course, go down that level and then look at the APL code. And yes, of course, we have so much code. There are co places where we could do better on, 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 on slicing and dicing, absolutely. It's really interesting to see the considerations you're having on the technology st stack going forward. Mm -hmm. That's one part of it. The other part, as you briefly mentioned, is finding the right kind of people mm -hmm. who can help you to make this live for the next 20 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, and young people, they are taken up by new languages that come up, Python, Java, you name it. They sort of want to jump from one thing to the other. Um, I know that SimCorp has implemented a very unique way of introducing young people into your technology and also to try and make sure that you retain them. Could mm -hmm. you share with uh, the rest of the audience uh, what you actually do when somebody comes on board and joins SimCorp? Yes, yes, uh, uh, absolutely. I think it is not easy. I mean, uh, when you have these interviews and the one I referred to where he said, well, C Sharp is legacy. Well, how do you then kind of start with APL? But I, I think the what, what to actually get people interested, I think what, what we have learned to do and, and appreciate is that we begin to talk about the properties of the language and we mix that with the domain because we would really like people to be interested in the domain because that is what they're going to work with. So, so trying to get them out of this uh, CV-driven kind of thinking and then into, well, isn't it really important that you like the financial world? You don't have to be an expert, but you need to understand what a stock or an option is because you're going to use a lot of time on that. So, so that's kind of, of, of going below and talk about properties of languages instead of just headlines. That is kind of one, uh, one way uh, to actually get them interested. Then when, when we have uh, uh, people starting, um, there is a fairly long introduction. Um, and, and it, it starts with our product. The three weeks of, of courses where you basically learn the front office, the middle office, back office parts, and you get the same training as our consultants that are going out and installing this. So it's, it's kind of a heavy course. And you are a developer. So, but, but it's again to say, well, yes, you are going to develop, but what, are we, what is this kind of a system? get into to that. And then we, we start a process around if it's an APL uh, developer, well, then, then we of course have the, the, uh, the training book and we have uh, courses in frameworks and so forth. And we have uh, people that in the team that will support you and in, 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 in get going. So, so it's, 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 it's actually nice because we are able to do it, but also because we are forced to do it, that we actually take responsibility for this training ourselves. I actually think it's, it's, it's a, it, 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 it's, it's good that we are, we are doing it, but we don't really have the choice. Uh, but I, I think it brings people on on a better way because we kind of dis decide that. The cost of that is, is, I think, is low compared to the fact that you actually get people in with the articulation that, that you as a company want to, 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 to put in the process. So, um, so that's what we do. For, for C Sharp, it's a little bit different because then um, they have the background uh, from the university and then it's more about the framework. For APL, it's a little bit longer process. But I actually like to do it because we, yeah, we, uh, we, we tell our story around this. Hmm? Niels, thank you very much. Can we have a big hand for Niels? Thank you. <laughs>